Texas as we get ready for a three-game conference series. The Texas Tech Red Raiders welcome in 17th ranked Texas for a three-game Big 12 set. Glad you're with us, Chris Sylvester, Daniel Gilman, our entire Big 12 now on ESPN Plus crew. Daniel, great crowd on hand in Lubbock, and it's a matchup, a rematch, if you will, of last year's Big 12 tournament with Texas Tech surprised Texas and ended the Longhorns' regular season. Yeah, a lot of new faces, though. Both of the pitchers here today, Chris, going to be newcomers on a part of the team, as you see the Nevada transfer in Kendall Fritz. And we're told it's a sellout this weekend, a doubleheader tomorrow with a little bit of a shakeup. So we're ready for a fun Friday night of action. So Kendall Fritz is in the circle. She's a first-year Red Raider. Spent the first three college seasons in her career at Nevada. And facing off against Janae Jefferson the best hitter in Texas softball history. And she is making more history tonight in Lubbock. Now the career leader in games played and starts number 248 in her career today, surpassing Desiree Williams, who played at Texas from 2005 to 2009. She is already the all-time hits leader and batting average leader in Texas softball history. And she's worked a 3-0 count against Kendall Fritz. Chris, this is what makes Janae Jefferson so dangerous. Obviously, the bunt single that broke the record last weekend in the loss to Oklahoma State. But how about a green light on 3-0? And how about a great catch just to add to a number of them in her senior season for Play Peyton Blythe, who makes the running grab. Well, we can talk about a multitude of things that went on in that play. I was just about to highlight the ability for Jefferson to find gaps and also keep the defense on their toes with the bunt. Huge swing and maybe, what, the 10th leaping diving grab by the senior out in center this season behind Fritz and company. So Fritz gets a big first out as she retires Jefferson. And now Mia Scott fouls off the bunt attempt. So we're seeing a pitcher here in Fritz, Chris, that has really come into her own in the month of April. It's the final game for her in April. Maybe we might see her tomorrow afternoon. She brings a, a little bit of that mid-60s, 63 to 65, adds the rise, but really likes to go horizontally. The curve and the screw does throw in a change up every once in a while, but the rise and the change from Fritz are a little bit more of those waste pitches. And we'll see what this Texas offense decides to employ because they can really pick spots, and that's what teams have done against Fritz in the first inning. Well, Fritz has gone two and one on Mia Scott. She's the starting third baseman for Texas. A 351 hitter, nine doubles, four triples. She's got a home run and 23 RBIs. True freshman from Angleton, Texas. And trying to bounce back after going hitless in six at-bats against Oklahoma State pitching last weekend. Now a three-ball, one-strike count. And much like what we talked about last time, Texas Tech was at home against top-ranked Oklahoma. This Texas team, not nearly as much firepower, although they did beat the Sooners, uh, took one of those games in Austin a couple of weekends ago. You cannot gift this team extra base runners. And Fritz will let her defense work behind her again as Via throws out Scott for out number two. And a weekend last weekend for Texas Tech where Coach Sammy Ward here in her second year, she's seeing all of these Big 12 teams for the second time in these sets. And what she told us, Chris, is all she needs is, right, the fielding, pitching, and hitting to all synchronize. The pitching was there last weekend, just six runs allowed in the three games at Baylor, waiting for the bats to wake up a little bit. The addition of Kennedy Kreitz at the bottom of the lineup today is an interesting one because she clearly has that hottest bat. Armijo gets back after a day off. And the idea for Texas Tech has to be to get off to that first inning lead. Eight and three this season when the Red Raiders lead after the first. And a quick chance for Kendall Fritz to settle in as she has struggled in first innings this season. Dealing with Mackenzie Parker with two outs and the base is empty. It's a one ball, one strike count. The junior first baseman hitting 316 with eight doubles, seven homers, 35 RBIs. Out of Conroe, Texas. And she fouls off the 1-1 pitch. Fritz jumps ahead, one ball, two strikes. Parker, as a sophomore last season, hit 367 and swung it well in Stillwater. Had three hits with a home run against Oklahoma State pitching last weekend. 
Well, the first at bat for Fritz where she finally gets ahead of a hitter after a pair of three ball counts. Well, Parker has to duck out of the way of that one. Well, Texas now 32 15 and 1 this year. Ty came earlier this season against Minnesota in a game that was halted after six innings. Currently 7 and 5 in the Big 12. 43 and 14 last year. Came up just short of the Women's College World Series, and there's strike three called to Mackenzie Parker. Texas Tech, they couldn't have asked for a better start as Kendall Fritz retires Texas. One, two, three in the top of the first. The 17th ranked Longhorns, nothing. Texas Tech is coming up. Are you looking for some new tech gear? Be sure to stop at the Matador shop located on the concourse for all of your Texas Tech apparel needs. Well, Texas held out of the run column, held out of every column as Kendall Fritz retired the side one, two, three in the top of the first. Now the Red Raiders in their final regular season series opener. We'll see the Fresno State transfer Haley Dolcini in the circle. Daniel, Texas, her third stop after she spent her first four college seasons in her home state of California. She has been a much welcomed addition to this Texas Tech rotation. Uh, rather, yeah. this Texas rotation. Big shoes to fill, huh, for Dulcini, but she at six foot has those big shoes, and she's been able to come up clutch in re relief, obviously, of losing Elish and, and O'Leary for the Longhorns. Dulcini last weekend did everything needed. She went nearly nine innings in the opener, but fell with that Cottrell walk-off homer in Oklahoma State. And what we're going to see from Haley Dulcini is a lot of strikes. She hasn't walked more than two in all of conference play. you got to go back to mid-March in that wild LSU series for the last time that Dulcini really flummoxed out of the strike zone. Ariana Villa starts the Red Raider half of the first with a leadoff base hit. So Villa who went hitless in Waco but did have four hits the weekend prior in the series victory at Iowa State starts the Red Raider half of the first. We should also mention Daniel that the pitching matchup features a couple gals that were in the Mountain West this time last year. How about it? Yeah, a little bit of a different uh, strokes for different folks out here in the Big 12. But right on cue, Chris, if you're Texas Tech, and, you know, of course, Coach Miller and, and Coach Coaches Ward are going to focus on trying to stay in the strike zone for both sides. You want a strike-throwing pitcher here in Fritz, and you don't want to be afraid to, to go after first pitches. Obviously, we see Peyton Jackson here in the left side of the batter's box, and she had a phenomenal outing last time. She faced these Longhorns back in that third-place game in the Big 12 tournament. Yeah, Peyton Jackson, the three RBIs, really instrumental in helping Texas Tech beat Texas in last season's Big 12 tournament. She's got a two ball, no strike count as Dulcini finds the inside edge. Peyton Jackson, the junior out of Missouri City, leads Texas Tech in the batting average department with a 349 clip. 11 doubles, three triples, four homers, 18 RBIs, and she skies it deep to right field. That one is way back there, and it's gone! A two-run shot off the bat of Peyton Jackson. 
And what a start for the Red Raiders. Well, Chris, you can check off the early game tactics, right? You want to get through a clean first inning for Kendall Fritz. And then how about Peyton Jackson? Back-to-back -back games against Texas and what about five RBIs in her four at-bats dating back to last May. And for Haley Dulcini, she has not been hit this hard in the early portions of the game, even against Oklahoma. She was able to stymie the Sooners' bats early and only allowed four earned runs in the two outings. So Texas Tech, they scored just two runs all of last weekend against Baylor, salvaging the finale in Waco. They grabbed two runs, two hitters in to the series opener against 17th-ranked Texas. And now Carson Armijo out of the three spot in the batting order. Waves and misses as Dolcini jumps ahead. Nothing at two. Boy, Peyton Jackson, she has become a longhorn slayer in her tech already. A jolt into the lineup. I mentioned the number. I'll say it again. Eight and three when leading after the first inning for Texas Tech. One of those losses coming a few weeks ago to Abilene Christian. And, you know, Carson Armijo, she's had a, a couple games off here recently, Chris, and just not quite looking like herself. I wonder if she's going to switch up her approach to the plate here later in this series. Yeah, Dulcini picks up the first out on the punch out of Armijo. There's Ellie Bailey hitting out of the cleanup spot. He waves and misses at the first stop from Dolcini. Well, Dolcini was the Mountain West Pitcher of the Year in 2021 at Fresno State. Was also named to the Softball America All-American third team. And likely on her way to all Big 12 honors with the job she's done at Texas. Last time out, pitched twice over the weekend at Oklahoma State in the finale of that series. She pitched six innings, giving up two hits, just one earned run, and was the tough luck loser in Stillwater. You go back to the series finale, Daniel, in Stillwater, Texas out hit Oklahoma State 8-2, but lost the game 2-1. Yeah, eight runners left on base, Chris. And, you know, going through that box score, re-watching that game a couple days ago, UT really was in full control. And I'll tell you what, swings like this are going to benefit Haley Dolcini. The entire at-bat for Ellie Bailey kind of looked like she was swinging to try to repeat what we saw Jackson did a few at-bats ago. And that's going to be to the behest of Dolcini, who is certainly a swing-and-miss style pitcher, right? 152 strikeouts during her 132nd inning. But back to that game three and game one as well, that extra inning loss. Texas had runners on base in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and yet just couldn't get over the hump against the Pokes who eliminated them in the Supers last year. Well, Dulcini has seemingly settled in there after giving up the two-run home run to Peyton Jackson with back-to-back -back strikeouts of Armijo and Bailey. And now ahead of Texas Tech's DP, Riley Ellen. Nothing in two. Well, for Ellen, she has just gotten better and better as the season has progressed. Her first at Texas Tech after transferring in from LMU where she spent the last three seasons. And Rossini strikes her out on three pitches to put the finishing touches on tonight's first inning. But Texas Tech, damage done. Peyton Jackson, a two-run home run. And the Red Raiders have an early lead after one inning at home. What's your favorite dessert? Ice cream. Oh, are you the morning person or not else? Hi, Al. When's the last time you danced? All the way today. What's the last show you've been to watch? Still in. <laughs>
off the top of the second for the Longhorn, number 33, Mary Ayakopo. Texas Tech out to an early 2-0 lead over Texas as we move to the top of the second. Kendall Friss will face the middle of the Longhorn batting order. Mary Ayakopo out of the cleanup spot, leads off. Ayakopo, the starting catcher for Texas. Kendall Fritz got through a very dangerous top third of the Longhorn batting order, one, two, three in the first. And a quick visit from her battery mate, Kennedy Kreitz, who's got the start at catcher after a three hit performance in the series finale at Waco last weekend. A hitter like Ayakopo, Chris, it's, it's interesting because you don't want to say she's having a down year, obviously, right? Hitting over 300, half of the amount of home runs that she hit a season ago. And pitchers just being a lot more concerned. And this is exactly the kind of situation you want to face a powerful bat like Ayakopo. Nobody on. You can kind of pick around the edges if you're Fritz. And if she can get calls like that a little bit off the outside corner, it's going to force the Texas hitters to cheat a bit on those outside pitches. Ayakopo shoots it the other way, foul territory, and no chance Ooh. for anybody to really get there. Ariana Villa just took a step down into the Texas dugout as she tried to go after that foul ball. Now it's two and two. Disappearing act, Chris. We love the effort. A warm evening, as we mentioned. Temperatures in the high 80s. Wind swirling around near 20 miles per hour in Lubbock today. And if uh, you're unaware of the schedule change, there was one in the series this weekend. Didn't affect the opener today, but instead of the traditional Friday through Sunday series, because of potential inclement weather rolling in Sunday, teams will wrap up this series with a doubleheader tomorrow. And Ayacopo uh, just gets a piece of the full count pitch. You know, you mentioned the effort, and you know, clearly with a rivalry like this, there's not going to be anything that you, you, you second guess, right? What's on the line for each team? But there is certainly a lot to play for, for both of these teams, as Texas Tech wants to play themselves into a, a little bit better of a seed into the tournament they have next weekend off. And Texas sits in the top 20 in RPI and rankings, and they want to be hosting come a couple weeks from now. Ayacopo flies out to Peyton Blythe. And that's how the top of the second begins in Lubbock. So four up, four down. A good start for Kendall Fritz. Fritz earlier this season became the fourth Red Raider pitcher that's in program man, history. It's been a perfect game, which he achieved perfection against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Here's Katie Samuz. Takes the first pitch up and away. Freshman out of Humble, Texas, just north of Houston. He gets a hold of one, but it will stay in the ballpark. A little too much topspin there as Peyton Jackson puts it away for out number two. So Kendall Fritz, she got the strikeout of Mackenzie Parker to wrap the first, but she is pitching the contact, and her defense has held steady five batters in. A little bit of a different approach, you know, the last time that, that these that Lubbock fans the saw the Texas Tech Olympia pitching staff, Washington. because after getting shelled by Oklahoma, Chris, these Red Raider pitchers really came into their own the last few weekends. It was a tough back-and-forth, high-powered loss to start the Iowa State series. But since then, Coach Ward now has confidence going to any of her three starters. She told us that on any given day here over the next few weeks, it can be Erna Carlin. It, it, could, it might be the Oklahoma transfer in Olivia Reigns. But we see to start this weekend, it's the presumed ace to start the year with a sub-3 ERA in Fritz, and she's looking to rebit the ace. A one ball, one strike count to Alyssa Washington. Washington batting sixth. Two balls, one strike. Washington, a sophomore 
hitting 290 with seven doubles, four homers, 23 RBIs. From Abilene, about 160 some odd miles from Lubbock. Washington on the Big 12 all freshman team last season. Now two ball, two strike count against Kendall Fritz. Ab Oric, Peyton Blythe, Kennedy Kreitz scheduled to hit where the Red Raiders come to bat in the home half of the second. 2-2 two -two pitch. And a half swing foul ball that ricocheted out of Kreitz's glove. It's a good call early on. We've got the Ewalds who is a, uh, a regular here in the Big 12 this season behind home plate and to, you know, prevent any controversy, any chance. He instantly called that a foul ball. You could even hear it on the Nat sounds, right? Foul ball, foul ball, which is what you want. In on the hands and rolls foul. Probably a, a wise IQ decision. Yeah. yeah, a wise decision for Ellie Bailey to let that one go. Wouldn't have been much of a chance with Villa also going after it. If Washington can reach, Courtney Day waits on deck for Texas. A Peyton Jackson two-run first inning home run, the difference early. And another foul ball off Washington's bat. She had three hits against Oklahoma State pitching last weekend. We mentioned two one-run losses and a three-run loss. As discouraging as it was for Texas to get swept by a team that ended their season last year, the Longhorns really, really close against a quality bunch in Stillwater last weekend. Now the count's on Washington. And how about that last stretch that Texas had to play with three against Oklahoma, three against Oklahoma State. No shame in going one and five in that stretch. I mean, getting one is impressive enough, handing Oklahoma their first loss of the year. There's another 3-2, and it's ripped fair. Just inside of third base. And Washington aboard with the first Texas hit against Kendall Fritz. Great piece of hitting. Quick hands, Chris. But how about the quick hands out and left? We've talked all season long about Texas Tech's defense. Texas comes in with, with Simmons, Dayton, and Day, a quick outfield. But you see Jackson. She made another Eight, highlight four, reel one, diving three, play three, last four, weekend three. in Waco. But a very underrated quick move there. Keeps the runner in Washington out of scoring position. And now Courtney Day needs to find gaps to score Texas's first run. Fritz misfires with the first pick off the outside. Courtney Day hitting 315 with 10 doubles, eight homers, 25 RBIs. In that started with Iacopo facing a three ball count. Washington singled on a full count pitch. So now four three ball counts already from Fritz. She falls behind a day 2-0. and I wonder if that's going to catch up to her. Now it's 3-0, and Chris. And maybe just a, a bit pressing. And that, that's kind of what Coach Ward told us about Fritz before last weekend. And then Kendall Fritz comes out against Baylor, throws seven and two third shutout innings in her two outings with a save and a hard luck loss. Yeah, her first save at Texas Tech. She had five saves last year, which was among the nation's leaders at Nevada. Swinging on 3-0, and it's popped up, and Ariana Villa in the shallow outfield oh makes God, the catch. No Kendall Fritz strands that two-out single off the bat of Alyssa Washington. Inning and a half gone in Lubbock. Tech up 2-0 over Texas.
town called Bel Air. Haley Dolcini allowed a two-run home run to Peyton Jackson, then struck out the next three batters to wrap the first. Trans from Fresno State back out there for the second. And facing Abby Oric, the Red Raiders starting third baseman. Oric followed by Peyton Blythe and Kennedy Kreitz in the Texas Tech second. Chris, you talk about getting red mad. I think only Haley Dolcini got burnt orange mad after that home run by Jackson. Threw, she would throw 10 pitches to retire the rest of the order in order. One ball, nine strikes, most of them swinging strikes, and three straight strikeouts. And Texas Tech contact there by Abby Oric, but Dolcini has kind of upped that game to a new level. And for her, at least, and Texas fans, they'll have to hope that the offense can produce because... I'm not sure if Texas Tech is going to be able to put together too many more rallies now that Dulcini has gotten into that angry groove. Here comes the 1 2 pitch, or it takes low. Abby Orrick hitting 272 with 10 doubles, 5 homers, 18 RBIs. Just a sophomore. Sammy Ward envisions her as uh, part of the core moving forward that can hopefully compete for Big 12 titles in the very near future. She strikes out swinging, so now four straight punch outs. Going back to the first, Haley Dulcini. And oftentimes with aces, they're more susceptible to getting knocked around early in games. It's when they get into grooves that they're seemingly so tough to hit. And Dulcini, since allowing that two run home run to Jackson, she has appeared to settle into her groove as she's punched out four straight. That starts the senior, Peyton Blythe, with strike one. First pitch strike couldn't be more important for a pitcher like Dolcini who kind of relies on picking a car apart the corners. And of course, you get more reliability from the umpires when you could throw early strikes in counts and you get more of those off the corner Greg Maddox-like calls. And for Haley Dolcini, this all kind of feels like a little bit of a, a spring training here at the end of the year because for Texas, they really want her to be as, as fresh and as clean as possible come mid-May and in, in early June. That's a ripped foul. That they got two on Peyton Blythe playing her final set of games at Texas Tech at the friendly confines of Rock Johnson Field this weekend out of Hugh Springs, Texas. That hits in the final two games of the Baylor series last time. Rolled softly. Jefferson with a nice glove flip and in time to get the speedy Blythe. Let's have a little perspective here. Peyton Blythe playing in her 134th game for Texas Tech. Great play made by Jefferson in her 248th game. And you see the first baseman there, Mackenzie Parker. She has not needed to pick too many balls out of the uh, out of the clay this season when thrown from that keystone over there in Je Janae Jefferson. A lot of talk about Janae Jefferson and how she's definitely the best hitter that has come through Texas softball in the history of the program. Well, she can get it done with love as well. Tough to get anything by her. She doesn't make too many mistakes. Kreitz ties it in the air, foul territory, and it lands on top of the Red Raider dugout. Well, Kennedy Kreitz had a breakout performance in the series finale against Baylor. Knocked in what wound up being the go-ahead run in that game, a 2-0 win for Texas Tech. But she went 3-for-3 three three in that game after starting the season with two hits in her first nine at-bats. 
You really see it in the emotion as well. Kreitz kind of went nuts on that go-ahead single as she should in, in an emotional first run of the series coming in the 20th inning. Red Raiders have the second, no run. Strikes no out no looking. Error. Dosin gets a couple more punch outs and bounces back with a perfect second. Still 2 nothing, Texas Tech as we move to the third in Lubbock. Presented by Covenant Children's Hospital, Southwest Dairy Farmers, Wentz Orthodontics, Baskin Robbins, and Raising James. It's a terrific way for young fans, eighth grade and under, to become involved in Red Raider events and activities. For more information, visit TexasTech.com slash kids club. the third inning, 2 nothing lead for the Red Raiders here at Rocky Johnson Field. Texas bottom of the order here, 8-9-1. Daniel Yeoman alongside Chris Sylvester. So happy to be with you all on a Friday evening as Whitaker doesn't waste any time. Takes the outside curve and pops out to Villa. Back-to-back pop-outs to the second baseman here. And Whitaker, an all-freshman team member last season in the Big 12, hasn't quite looked at the trends here today, Chris. And when you see Kendall Fritz splits, You'll understand why 37 pitches, 18 strikes, 18 balls, but just one over the minimum so far as she's able to maneuver through this high-powered Longhorn offense with the center fielder Bella Dayton coming to the plate. Yeah, some of that in large part, she's recorded two outs on Texas 3-0 and hacks. So the Longhorns have had the green light early against Kendall Fritz. But as you often say, Daniel, a lot of dropping of the elbow. We've seen a lot of pop-ups. First time through the order against Fritz. You know, I think my in coach so, told me so many times that it's kind of ingrained now as a broadcaster. When I see that easy pop out, I think the elbow drops immediately. And so with a pair of three ball counts last inning from Fritz, we've seen back-to-back at-bats for the Longhorns swinging at the first pitch. Dayton falls behind in the count 0-2. Taking a look at Kendall Fritz so far, coming off of Six innings in the game one, one nothing loss to Baylor. She just walked two, a number that certainly has been the high point for this Nevada transfer. Just 26 walks in 113 innings. The two pitch misses high with Janae Jefferson waiting on deck. And Chris, we talked a little bit about Jefferson's record watch. She breaks the all time games played, games started record already with the at bat in the top of the first inning, chasing a couple others, right? Doubles and maybe, just maybe, she can get into an elusive 200 run club as Jefferson will come to the plate. Two quick outs to start this third inning. Well, it's so important to take care of the bottom of this Texas batting order because Janae Jefferson is that much better with runners on base. So Kendall Fritz recognizing that Jefferson and the top of the order are due up towards the latter portions of this top of the third. And she's pounded the strike zone so far. Jefferson on a 3-0 pitch in the first inning, the first batter of the game, sent one out to deep center. Didn't quite have the wind that maybe usually is blowing out here at the Rock. And Peyton Blythe was able to catch up to it with a leaping grab. Got this sellout crowd on their feet right off the bat. And 
Jefferson now two outs and nobody on. Maybe elusive and looking for a different kind of swing as she will send one out to deep center and Blythe can't catch this one. Jefferson halves the lead with her third home run here in this magical senior season. Well, Daniel, on a day where she makes a little Texas softball history, becoming the career leader in games played and starts. More of the norm for Janae Jefferson, her 334th career hit. Goes over the center field wall. It's just the second hit against Kendall Fritz, and that's why you want to make sure the bases are empty when Janae Jefferson steps into the batter's box. Jefferson, not quite the home run threat. Mentioned just two coming into this game, but she didn't want Eaton Blythe to rob another extra base hit from her. And that's one way to do it. We have seen a ton of home runs hit in the last month here for Texas Tech home games. And unfortunately for the home side, many of them have come from the visitors as Fritz allows her 19th long ball of the year. Mia Scott takes a few with two outs, nobody on in the third. Yeah, that being said, Sammy Ward was extremely pleased with her pitching staff last weekend. She's hoping that this final Big 12 series can be that coveted weekend where everything kind of comes together. The, the offense is clicking. The pitching is, is coming up with quality uh, innings and outings. And so uh, we'll just have to wait and see if this is going to be the weekend for Texas Tech. But you mentioned it, Red Raider pitching. They've now let up 55 home runs this season. They'd like to stay away from the long ball. And if they are to give up long balls to the Longhorns, they'd like them to be in the solo shot variety. One, two pitch and a good job spoiling for the true freshman out of Angleton. Who has some credits to her name. Mia Scott picked up the big bases loaded double against Oklahoma in what was important insurance after the Sooners added two in the bottom of the final inning. For a 4-2 Texas win in that finale, behind Dolcini's strong pitching as Fritz just misses on one high and inside and taking a tighter look at Mia Scott, USA softball U18 team, named back in June of last season. Quite high praise here from fourth year head coach Mike Light to propel this freshman to the top of the lineup. Good vision there to fill the count from the freshman Scott. Big batter for Fritz. You, you don't want to give Texas any signs of being rattled after allowing that home run. 3-2, laced out towards left center, finding the gap and the wall as Mia Scott will trot towards second, pick up her 10th two-bagger of the season. Well, so second time through the order, you always feel like hitters have a better idea of what's coming. Jefferson with the home run to center, and now Scott with the gapper to left center, and Mackenzie Parker, all of the sudden, with a base hit, can tie this game. All of this with two quick outs in the inning, and both on early pitch swings. And so since then, we've seen Jefferson and Scott a little bit more patient at the plate. Scott worked to count full, and see a strong secondary lead off of skin base for Scott. And now we're going to have a quick visit to the circle after Kendall Fritz losing the zone a bit. Chris got the big strikeout to Dayton, and then. In your opinion, with what we've seen from coaches Brittany Miller and Sammy Ward this year, how long do you think the leash might be in this first game with a doubleheader tomorrow? Yeah, it's seemingly imperative for Fritz to uh, give Sammy Ward and company some length. Uh, it really just to set the tone too, right? I mean, put a lot of pressure on yourself if you lose this game to try and bounce back uh, tomorrow. I mean, there, there is no third day, uh, third opportunity to regroup. You get, those games will be played you know, pretty much back to back within half an hour or so of each other tomorrow. So this not only a big sequence early in this game for Texas Tech, but really a, just a big for momentum purposes because the Red Raiders will have the top of their batting order coming up in the bottom half of the inning. Let's get to the bottom half as Villa takes the two hopper and on the first pitch after the circle visit, Parker strands the runner. Texas able to get on the board with the Janae Jefferson homer. We'll be right back.
30 pitches, just six balls thrown by the redshirt senior, Haley Dolcini. One of those three pitches, though, rocketed over the right field fence for the two-run jack by Peyton Jackson in the first. As we welcome you back to Sunny Lubbock, in a matchup between Tech and Texas here. Chris, the 63rd all-time meeting between the two, and Texas has dominated as Riley Love gets a hold of one, but Early on, it is a tails foul, and there you see a little bit of movement already in the Texas Tech bullpen down there in left field. You had that feeling that if Kendall Fritz couldn't get out of the gym in the top of the third, then maybe a move would be made with the depth that has been seen this season from Tech's pitching staff. The nine hitter today, Riley Love, who has, for the most part of the season, hit a little bit higher in the lineup, seeing a shakeup here late in the year by second year head coach Sammy Ward. And after Love hit ninth in the finale against Baylor, keeping the same juju going with Blythe a little bit higher. And good eyes shown by the all freshman shortstop. Yeah, Sammy Ward talked about the progress of this program in her second year, already more overall wins and more conference wins than her first season in 2021. She'd like to take another leap here against Texas this week and to get some momentum bottled up for the Big 12 tournament. Now, Texas will close out the regular season against Baylor next weekend while Texas Tech is idle during finals time. So this series is that much more important when you consider that this is it for Texas Tech before the Big 12 tournament. Oh, borderline pitch on 2-2. And Chris, you, you hit the nail on the head right there because next weekend, in a way, the Red Raiders may be rooting for Texas to try to get a little bit better seating with the Baylor Bears sitting right above Tech in the standings. The Red Raiders 5-10, and ten, Longhorns 7-5. And, and there's that discrepancy, 15 conference games played already. As Riley Love works the walk. It's a bit of a tough one to settle with if you're Dolcini. You got a 138 hitter in the bottom of the lineup. And now a pair of bats in Via and Jackson who already rattled you a bit. Nobody out. We see that second year second baseman chasing a good screwball off the outer half. Yeah, we've seen Via different spots in the order here during the Big 12 season, but Texas Tech with that leadoff base runner, we'll see if Sammy Ward and company elect to maybe try and manufacture maybe manufacture a run and get it back. 275 hitter this year in Via, and maybe a little bit of crossed signal, signals there as Iacopo is set up way outside. And the aggressive swinging of Via. 31 strikeouts this season. He's going to have to battle now down 0 2. See the middle infield pinch towards second, looking for a ground ball. Peyton Jackson awaits on deck, and we'll see if Texas Tech can get some progress and some production from the middle of their order. As our Mio Bailey, Ellen, Oric all went down via strikes the first time through. One, two. Curve couldn't quite get all the way back across plate. Scott and Washington on the left side of the defense behind Dolcini with Jefferson and Parker on the right side. Simmons, Dayton, and Day spanning left to right. And Villa's gonna go down on strikes. How about six quick strikeouts after the two early runs? And there's one down here in the third inning, and it's Peyton Jackson's time to shine once again. So you 
have to believe that Haley Dolcini is in. Keep it on the outer corner, Chris, as opposed to trying to go inside against the home run threat now in Jackson. First pitch to Peyton misses outside, and, you know, they're going to call that a strikeout looking to Villa. It, it did seem like maybe she swung at the pitch, but it was called a strike anyways. So the second backwards K for Dolcini. Yeah, twice this year she's put double figures in punch out column. Certainly on pace to do that against this Texas Tech bunch pretty early in this game. But Peyton Jackson, boy, the swing she put on the Dolcini offering her first time. And now we'll get the circle visit with the first two pitches missing to Peyton Jackson. But, what, you know, when Peyton Jackson's locked in as she seemingly is right now, she's one of the better hitters in this conference. So such an important sequence. You can understand the timing of the visit, Daniel, because you've got a great hitter's count with a red-hot hitter in batter's box who put a great swing on it the first time through. How about Haley Dulcini? You start your career at UC Riverside, then you go to Fresno State, and now you get to be coached by that guy, Mike White, who has just turned every pitcher into a superstar from Oregon in his nine seasons, and of course the standout as a pitcher in his own right for the fast pitch career of the New Zealand turned American citizen. A couple world championships back in the 2000s before retiring back in 2007. And not often do you see head coaches kind of doubling as, as pitching coaches. And while Brittany Miller for Texas Tech is the de facto pitching coach, you know that Coach Ward works a lot with the pitchers as well. Uh, let's Randy focus on some of these power threats as we see Jackson just missing the barrel on that swing. And then a lot of foul line drives down that left field line here in this third inning. Yeah, back-to-back -back pitches after falling behind 2-0. and oh, And, well, pitches that Peyton Jackson could get her hands and arms extended on, but fouling them each off, and now the count's even. Jackson, who has a hit in four of her last five games, the two-run shot in the first. She goes down on strikes. Just a little bit too much late life. On that screwball from Dolcini. And after the leadoff walk, back-to-back -back K's brings up Raiders, Carson Armijo. Who had the day off in the finale, the 2-0 win at Baylor last weekend. Armijo has seen her batting average dip a bit, but still sits above 300. Ooh, Icopo looking to catch Love sleeping on a called strike. Yeah, well, after giving up that leadoff walk, Dolcini has really grinded down and worked hard to punch out Via and Jackson. Certainly on cue, we have seen a lot of late swings. And you wonder if those first two batters of the game, Dolcini was not quite locked in and maybe took Texas Tech for granted a bit on the single from Via, home run from Jackson. Because since then, Red eight Red strikeouts the no run, and a clean nowhere. third striking out the side. And it's we head to the fourth to one challenge. Texas Tech. Let's throw it over to Kennedy, who is with today's contestant. Thanks, Kyle. Hey, fans, I'm here with Avery, who will be competing against Morgan. Avery will have 15 seconds to name as many items from an unknown category as possible. All right, are you ready? Okay, your category.
Starting off the top of the fourth for the Longhorns, Mary Iacopo. Four, five, six for the Longhorns. Due up here in this fourth inning on a sun-drawn Friday evening here in West Texas. And Mary Iacopo is not going to waste any time, and she ties this game. Back-to-back -back innings with solo shots for the visiting Longhorns. We're all square at two here in the fourth. Well, Iacopo, who has had a lot of success with the power in her bat during her Texas career, almost made it look effortless. Just a flick of the wrist says the pitch was elevated from Kendall Fritz. She has often fallen victim to the long ball, as has this Red Raider pitching staff at times in 2022. And, well, Texas, they have used the long ball to pull even here in the middle innings. Ninth home run of the season for the senior who had 16 last year. Maybe she heard me in that first plate appearance, Chris, saying that she's had a little bit of a down year outage-wise. Certainly plenty of time for Iacopo to get up to, into that mid-double digits as Katie Sim is a little early and we'll have a chat with Mike White and, of course, White, who is right in the center of the topic of conversation in the softball world four years ago when he not just made the move from Oregon, but he brought over nearly a dozen ducks with him. Of course, Miranda Ellish, the most notable one. In, in a weird twist of fate, Ellish transfers to Oklahoma State and beats the Longhorns last weekend in Stillwater. You know, I wouldn't put it past the committee to match up Texas and Oklahoma one more time here in a potential super regional rematch. Wouldn't that make for some high drama as Simmons takes high and outside? Washington on deck here with no outs in the fourth. The Longhorns able to really reassess this game and a tomahawk line drive to left. Watches Jackson parlay it back into the infield following the home run. No outs and a runner on first after the Sim is single. Yeah, Daniel, that's now four of the first five batters, second time through the order, put pretty good swings together Wait and picked up hits 11, against Kendall Olympia, Fritz. Washington. Did see some action brewing in the Red Raider bullpen when Texas Tech was hitting in the home half of the third. And, well, you wonder when Sammy Ward might want to throw something else out there in the circle to try and stymie the Texas bats like Kendall Fritz was able to do through the first two innings of this game. Brings up the sophomore from Abilene, and it's a bunt that just tails foul from Alyssa Washington. Now, we haven't talked too much about Kreitz behind home plate, and tomorrow in senior day for Texas Tech, they will honor Molly Grumbo, who has been the backstop for most of the season, in addition to the second-year transfer out of Indiana in Maddie Westmoreland. So we'll see Grumbo back in there tomorrow for game one at least, but Kreitz calling... Pretty steady game here. Her second consecutive start at home plate. And Fritz feels pretty comfortable, it seems. And Chris, as, as we move forward throughout this game, we'll keep an eye on who the catcher for Texas Tech is. And there's a good look at Kennedy Kreitz, who struck out in her first at-bat, as did six of her teammates. Fritz losing the strike zone now, falls behind Washington. Two and one the count for the reigning all freshman team honor in there in the right side of the batter's box. You can really feel the momentum of this game dangling back towards Texas. So important for Kendall Fritz to settle in there and get some outs. Swing and a miss from Washington evens the count. Alyssa Washington roped to base hit down the left field line. The first base runner of the game for UT back in the second. And since Janae Jefferson, who was robbed of an extra base hit in the first, struck with the solo shot last inning. There's a painted perimeter finder on the outside corner. Big out number one for Kendall Fritz and company. It brings up Courtney Day here. We talk about a potential outing saving out there, Chris. You had the feeling that Fritz's day might have been done had she not gotten through Washington. Yeah, Fritz, when she's at her best, she's able to go outside corner, inside corner, really command those portions of the strike zone. Great to see her just paint that perimeter, as you mentioned, 
to get that big first out of Washington. Unable to get the strike one though, and Kendall Fritz who has now thrown more balls than strikes in this game. Certainly hoping to continue to tightrope that line between wild and effectively wild as the seven hitting right fielder takes high and outside and Kreitz wants a word. Chris, when you were pitching back in your college days, was it different for you when you kind of had a, a change of pace catcher every once in a while? Well, I'll tell you this, uh, you, you work with all the catchers throughout the off season and during practice outside of game time, but there's nothing like that game feel itself. So you can't help but think that maybe Fritz and Kreitz here are just getting more and more comfortable with each other as this game moves along. Ground ball fair, five, four, and the speed is gonna prevent the double play as Texas Tech gets the lead runner and Simmons out at second. Now Courtney Day will replace her at first. Back-to-back -back outs from Fritz after allowing the first two base runners to pick up hits. And Jordan Whitaker, I'm sure, will be a little bit more patient this second time up to the plate after she popped out. First pitch of the third. Looks like we may have a pinch runner here for Texas. It will be Alyssa Papelka. Chris, a little bit of a shocking move, and potentially Papelka will stay in this game, but she's been one of the hottest hitters of late for Texas, hitting up over 450 in conference play. But used as a pinch runner here with two outs. Jordan Whitaker, all freshman team a season ago. A little bit of a Sophomore slump campaign, just making her 14th start of the season, hitting under the Mendoza line this season. Certainly has the potential as she rips one to left. Second base hit of the same variety as Whitaker stretches the runner in scoring position now, and there's two on and two out in the fourth. Yeah, another one from Fritz that was left up, and for Whitaker, Able to get her hands and arms extended, reach that bat out and poke it right in front of Peyton Jackson. Now Texas threatening two on, two out. Going to be up to Bella Dayton at the bottom of the order. And with Janae Jefferson and the big bats to follow, you figure that Bella Wait, Dayton will get on, something good to hit Bella here Dayton. with a couple on, a couple out. Dayton, certainly not someone to look past. Three home runs, just over a 250 batting average. And Kendall Fritz gets that much needed strike one with the meet in the Red Raider lineup due up in the fourth. Bailey, Ellen, and Oric, four, five, six. And a chance for Uncle Mo to swing right back on the home side with a big out. Dayton stretches and pops one foul. Jackson ranges over, and Texas ties the game with the home run by Iacopo, but strands a two as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning tied.
Leading off the bottom of the fourth for the Red Raiders, number 12, Ellie Bailey. Well, we've seen this game turn on its head as Texas Tech took a 2-0 lead. Tied at two here as we're seeing a nice range of emotion shown by our DJ at Rocky Johnson from Piano Man to Here for the Money. Trying to adhere to all of the crowds on this nearly sold out Friday is Haley Dolcini with eight strikeouts. Back to back innings scoreless in the circle as Ellie Bailey keeping the trend, Chris, of very early swings from the right handed power bats of Texas Tech today. It was a left hander in Peyton Jackson that started the scoring with a two run shot in the first. Now the stretch of Bailey, Ellen, and Oric all looking to make contact for the first time against this flame-throwing righty. Two-time yeah, National Pitcher of the Week. And since giving up that two-run home run to Peyton Jackson, the only blemish was the walk to Riley Love to start the third, but Golcini quickly erased that by following it up with three straight strikeouts, and there's another one. We do have a little bit of a change in the outfield, kind of what we, we guessed maybe that Papelka would stay in the game for Courtney Day. So Papelka will take over in center field with Dayton moved to left and Simis pushed over to right field. And with that strikeout, four straight now from Dolcini. Brings up the Loyola Marymount transfer in Riley Ellen. Who followed her head coach Sammy Ward across as well as Molly Grumbo as well. Ward's really liked what she's seen this season from Ellen in that DP spot. 260 batting average, 16 RBIs. Oh, a borderline pitch on 0-2 and well, maybe a little too close to take there from Ellen, but we'll see he doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. Another roped deep fly ball, well foul. Chris, after we saw a couple weeks ago, I have to believe that there were, had to have been some ladders involved in getting a couple of those Oklahoma home runs down from the treetops. Yeah, survival mode with swing. The, with the best of them, Jocelyn Allo, the all-time home run leader. Had a, a three home run game for the first time in her career, which for anybody else you wouldn't be surprised at, but uh, somehow she hadn't hit three home runs in the game prior to a few weeks ago here in Lubbock, just adding to her ridiculous accolades at, at OU. Another deep fly ball, well foul. Riley Ellen, who had her big swing about a month and a half ago, the walk-off home run. This time goes the other way and pops one into shallow right. And Jefferson is there for the second out. Now, right now, Haley Dolcini is just in a groove, in a rhythm. After giving up that two-run home run to Peyton Jackson, sometimes you need to get that wake-up call early. And for Dolcini, it came just a couple of batters into her outing today in Lubbock, but she has looked like a different pitcher since. To the sixth spot in Abby Oric. Oric, one of the many offers last weekend. In fact, only four Texas Tech hitters got hits. The 10 base hits in three games against Baylor with Bailey having three of them, along with Kreitz in that three-hit finale. Jackson and Blythe each with a pair. As Dolcini with a rare drop ball, couldn't get the call in the bottom portion of the zone. 2-0 oh the count. And the sophomore Abby Oric trying to extend this fourth inning. Chris, you see that little slap of the glove by Mary Iacopo, something that she established early in this season, and, and you see it around the league sparingly here and there. 
certainly adds to the gnat noise, where you know that a pitch is going to come when Ayakopo slaps the glove. And I remember watching that, you know, I, th I think Chris, you and I were together watching the crazy LSU comeback for the Longhorns. Certainly one for the record books this season for UT. In the three-game sweep of the Tigers. LSU would jump out to a 7-0 lead. Led 10-4 in the sixth before Texas put up five in the bottom half. Trailed by one run going into the seventh and walked it off in the bottom of the seventh with Mackenzie Parker's two-run double in the gap. Oric to the left side. Freshman Scott and scooped up nicely by Parker. Right on cue, it's like her ears were burning as we are through four, tied at two. Be sure to join us back here at The Rock tomorrow for more conference play as the Longhorns take on your Red Raiders in a doubleheader. Be sure to get here early as we honor our seniors free game. First pitch is scheduled for 12 p.m. For complete scheduling information and tickets, visit texastech.com. Playing right field for the Red Raiders, number two, Demi Elder. <laughs> Leading off the top of the fifth for the Longhorns, number two, Janae Jefferson. It is the top third of the Texas batting order scheduled in a 2 2 tie. Top of the fifth inning. Kendall Fritz still in the circle for Texas Tech. Janae Jefferson got Texas in the run column her last time as she hit a solo home run to center field. One of two home runs for the Longhorns. And there's a base hit. Passed Villa and kicks off of Blythe. Jefferson can fly. She's around second on her way to third. And that's a triple. A ground ball that scoots by the second baseman winds up a triple because Blythe kicked it away. It allowed Jefferson to take that extra base. And we saw it from Texas in the bottom of the fourth, a little bit of a defensive shift out in the outfield to add some speed. Well, Texas Tech does the same with Demi Elder taking over in right. And that'll seem to be the ball game for Fritz. Olivia Reigns in the circle, and we'll tell you more about the pitching change right after this.
Well, the Oklahoma transfer, Olivia Reigns, takes over for Kendall Fritz in the circle after Janae Jefferson starts the top of the fifth with a leadoff triple. Reigns dazzled last time out, picking up a win at Baylor where she tossed five and a third innings of scoreless softball. Picked up her first win in a Texas Tech uniform after dropping her first six decisions. Three straight scoreless outings. That inherits Jefferson at third base, nobody out. Mia Scott, the batter, she's one for two with a double. And takes the first pitch upstairs. Well, Chris, I was just about to mention, with a little bit of a record hunt coming from Jefferson, she was four doubles shy of breaking the Texas record. That's gonna be ruled a double, and then an error on the center fielder, Blythe. So how about two doubles shy of tying the record now from Jefferson, as we could be seeing a trio of record-breaking moments for Janae here this weekend. Yeah, 46th double in her career, putting her two off the program record. Or rather, 43rd double of her career. The, the record would be 46, and I don't think anybody doubts that with the two games in addition to this one here this weekend, three against Baylor next weekend, and then the entire postseason, including the Big 12 tournament, it's just a matter of time before Jefferson shatters another Texas record. Knocked down by Oric, and Scott will reach. Oh, unfortunately, I think that might have gotten the kneecap of the sophomore third baseman. <laughs> Coach Ward quick to her feet. Chris, talking about the scenario here. Of course, with the runner staying at third base and, and we're hoping that Oric is maybe dealing with just a stinger, nothing worse. But you have to wonder if Olivia Reigns, and, and we've seen it this season, maybe feels a little bit more comfortable coming into an inning with a runner on base. Because if not, a little bit of a surprising move here to not have her start the fifth. But at the same time, Fritz just had about 66 pitches going into the inning. I don't know if there's many tougher players on this diamond than Abby Oric. I saw her suffer uh, Pretty tough injury earlier in non-conference play. She missed just a few games. I'm sure she's more frustrated than anything that she couldn't pick up the out there on what could have been a bitty, bit of a clean, number nine, Mackenzie Parker. convenient out. Oh, so now they're at the corners. Still nobody out, Mackenzie Parker went 0 for 2 against the Tech starter, Kendall Fritch. She squares to bunt, pulls back, and Scott will take second base. Kennedy Kreitz not wanting to let go of it and risk Jefferson breaking for the plate. So now base hit could mean a couple runs for Texas. There's a great off speed from Reigns to get that second strike. These are the situations you practice for. Well, if Reigns could ever use a strikeout, now would be quite the spot to do it. She had two punch outs in her five and a third innings last time against Baylor. And she strikes out Parker. That's a big one for Olivia Reigns. You know, there's always an advantage facing an offense for the first time through. And of course, Reigns, no stranger to Texas, coming out of Oklahoma. Didn't see too much of them last season though. And that low tunnel delivery, Chris, you're gonna see a lot of pitches low in the zone. But if you want to throw to a hitter, I'm not quite sure if you want it to be Mary Iacopo. I have to imagine that maybe a nibble, you got that first pitch strike, but you don't want to give her anything in the meat of the plate.
Mary Iacopo out of Carson in Southern California. Range run, just hit, tied the game at two back in the fourth. Yeah, pardon me there, Chris. Range just matched up with Kreitz. You may look at that and you say, oh, she shook her off. Maybe a little miscommunication, but this is the second consecutive outing for that Reigns Kreitz battery. And as you said, it was the best outing of Olivia's short career thus far. She's looking two more balls, and more two strikes. like that ace pitcher. Looking for one more, Chris. What do you think? Low and outside? Yeah, I think you kind of keep it low against a hitter like this. Big spot. Here comes the 2 2. And she does keep it low, but Iacopo doesn't swing, and the count's full. You've got an RBI threat and Simis on deck. But I still don't think you throw a strike here. We've seen an aggressive Longhorn hitting team already today. Line to left in front of Jackson. That's a base hit. One run is in. Here comes Scott. Two run score and Iacopo delivers again. First lead for the Longhorns on a two run single. And how about the jump of the freshman Mia Scott? Not even you or I probably thought that that was 100% going to drop in front of the Speedy Jackson, but Scott was gambling. You saw how quickly she brought up the rear behind the Speedy Jefferson, who had to hold in case it was caught. She wants to tag. And Iacopo, her third RBIs of the game. Yeah, she's knocked in three of the four. Longhorns lead. One of those runs charged to... Kendall Fritz, the book now closed on the Tech starter, and after Texas Tech grabbed the 2-0 lead early, it has been all Longhorn since. One ball, one strike. Texas got one in the third, one in the fourth. They have struck for two in the top of the fifth. And with the way Haley Dolcini has been locked in on the other side, this will be a tall task for Tech. Out number two, Iacopo scoots up to third base. When you look at this outing for the offense of Texas, Mike White and his company have to be proud because it has been quite a few games since the Longhorn Bats have woken up. And yes, some of that can be attributed to the opponent pitching with OU and OK State. But if you want to make that first Women's College World Series here for White, you need to hit against pitchers like that. And you go back, you got to go back all the way to Kansas and Iowa State a couple weeks ago. And even Iowa State put a scare into Texas in the series opener. And missed by much. Alyssa Washington's gone one for two with a single and a strikeout. One of three punch outs for the starter, Kendall Fritz. To the backstop, Iacopo will not test it. Saw that a few times from Oklahoma a couple weeks ago, and it is clear the scouting report is out that there is not a lot of space behind home plate, especially with the catcher running at third. We've mentioned this in the past, Chris. You don't want to give any inkling of momentum back to the other side. Reigns gets one over to Washington. If Washington can reach, perhaps we'll see Alyssa the Pelka bat for the first time. And that's ball four. So Texas has them at the corners with two outs. Probably confidently pencil Washington into second. 
Now Day will re-enter here, hitting for Popelka. Runner takes off. They'll keep an eye on Ayakopo. Here she comes, and out. Nice job done by the Texas Tech infield. They never took their eyes off Mary Ayakopo, and they throw her out coming home to put an end to the top of the fifth. Texas gets two. Longhorns have their first lead with the Red Raiders coming to bat next. Well, welcome you back to Lubbock. Mary Ayacopo thrown out at home plate to end the top of the fifth, but apparently Texas challenging the ruling on the field. You see the umpires with the iPad. This three-man Big 12 crew of Bubba Ewald, Rocky Barnhill, Joshua Forberg. And a pretty big play in a close game. And Chris, and all of the challenges we've seen this year here at The Rock, I'm not sure we've seen one last this long. I don't know exactly when Coach White made the decision to challenge. But we are bordering on a full three minutes since the last half inning ended. Of course, a massive call, right? The difference between 4-2 and the bottom of the fifth. You see the, the Red Raiders already have their bats, and. Peyton Blythe ready to start this inning. Or, if it's overturned, Texas hasn't even taken the field yet. Right, Texas, Texas goes Tech, back you to can the only, You can only hope that this takes Haley Dolcini out of her rhythm a bit. Looked like the throw had beaten Ayacopo coming home. There we go. And after further review, we get confirmation about number three in the top of the fifth. So officially our half inning break, we'll be back with the Red Raiders trailing by a couple of runs in the bottom of the fifth.
So Texas, they push across a couple runs in the top of the fifth. Longhorns up 4-2 over Texas Tech. Haley Dolcini has not allowed a hit after giving up back-to-back -back hits to open up the game. Peyton Blythe, Kennedy Kreitz, Riley Love, the bottom third of Tech's batting order scheduled in the home half of the fifth. Blythe bounced out to Janae Jefferson he made a nice glove flip to retire the senior out of Hughes Springs. That was back in the second inning. Daniel, what's made it so tough for Red Raider hitters to make contact with Dulcini since the Jackson homer? Well, Chris, after facing Orm last weekend, you know, former teammates here with Dulcini and Orm back at Fresno State, I think Haley brings a little bit more of late life. And, and we mentioned it back in that first inning with our Miho, Bailey, and Ellen all going down via the strikeout in order. I don't think Texas Tech has been able to start the swings early enough. And of course, the difference in the variety between the curve and the screw has kept them guessing. But Dulcini hasn't shown the changeup. We haven't seen a lot of off speed. So if I'm, I'm you know, a Texas Tech hitter, I might cheat a bit here in the last few innings to guess curve or guess drop balls as we've seen rarely used. And instead, a little bit too much reacting late against the righty. Well, there's another strikeout for Dolcini. Her 10th punch out. Yeah, she gets Blythe to start the Red Raider half of the fifth. Dolcini, who number eight, Kennedy. had 10 strikeouts in the opening game against Kansas. Her other two outings this season with double digit strikeouts have come against. FGCU, Sam Houston, non-power five foes. So a chance to really put up a big number. Two-time national pitcher of the week. And when you've got Jefferson able to keep Blythe out of the base paths in the second inning, that was a really big play defensively. Fly ball to center field. Popelka drops it. And Kreitz is at second. Well. We mentioned she was two for 19 to open up the season before a three for three performance last time in Waco. And sometimes when things are going your way, you'll get breaks like that. And the Red Raiders have a runner at second with one out. For the Red Raiders, Chris, you took five, the words right out of my mouth. This is a Texas team that has committed way too many errors for Coach White's liking. That is the 60th of the season. Nearly oh, a chance. Ball, belted foul. But how about the hustle by Kennedy Kreitz? You could have very easily dogged that fly out to center, and instead she finds herself hustling to second, putting herself within a base hit from cutting the lead in half. One ball, one strike to Riley Love, who worked a walk. Two and one on Love with the top of the order to follow. Ariana Villa's on deck. Well, here's a chance for Texas Tech, right? Texas takes their first lead with two runs at the top of the inning. Dulcini seeking a, another shutdown frame. And if you're Texas Tech, Red Raiders would love to capitalize on that error. It's now it's three balls, one strike on Riley Love. How about a fun fact for you guys? This is the first Red Raider in scoring position today. That's how good Dolcini's been. Love, high and deep, but foul again. Tell you what, the Red Raiders are taking advantage of the foul home run counter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Love would really like to straighten out her swing and 
Put one to the other side of the foul pole. This one's high and deep. Left field, way back there. This game is tied. She did straighten it out. A Riley Love two-run blast. And we are tied at four. How about that? Chris, I know how badly you wanted to say she would love to straighten it out, but you didn't want to be corny, so I will take all the cheese. And Riley Love, the biggest smile of the day, as the error by Papelka, the defensive substitute on a can of corn, turns this game around. So Riley Love, it has been a, for the Red a tough w year Ariana, swinging the bat, but boy, she can erase everything that had previously happened. A two-run shot and quite the response from Texas Tech. Two of the three Red Raider hits against Dulcini have left the ballpark. Pretty perfect with runners in scoring position as well, huh? Ariana Villa for a third time. A single and a strikeout in their first two at-bats. And we gotta talk there about that perfect pitch. I mean, a, a screwball that you couldn't have walked from the circle to the plate and placed in a better spot. And now Villa is kind of guessing left and right and we're seeing her in a little bit of a different responsibility with nobody on and one out, just trying to find a way to keep this inning and Keep that wind blowing out to left. Two and two on Ariana Villa. Red Raiders have used the long ball. Both teams with a pair of home runs in this game. The difference, a couple of solo shots from Texas. Pair of two run homers for Texas Tech. Mia goes down swinging. 11th strikeout for Dolcini. And there are two away. What a change. Gotta love this sport. It looked like maybe Dolcini was gonna go the rest the of the Raider, game hitless. She was looking unhittable. Love hits two foul home runs after the dropped fly ball and then hits a no doubter to tie it. Peyton Jackson had the first Red Raider home run of the day, a two run shot back in the first inning. Back to that Riley Love at bat. Hit what, two or three foul ball home runs? And, and there's been a number of them from Texas Tech hitters against Dolcini. And I right, just got it to the right of that left field foul pull on the full count pitch. And the momentum has kind of swung back and forth. It's been a, a teeter totter game between these two to open up the series. And now we'll see if Jackson has the green light on 3 0. He does not, and Dolcini gets a strike in there. If Peyton Jackson can reach, Carson Armijo is scheduled next, although Demi Elder had taken over defensively to play right field. On a hop to Jefferson, and a nice leaping throw to get Jackson to finish up the fifth. But the Red Raiders pull even at four on a Riley Love two-run homer. And we are right back where we started as we head to the sixth.
comes the top of the six for the Longhorns, number 16, Alyssa Patoka. Our first plate appearance for the left-handed swinging Alyssa Papelka. She entered as a pinch runner earlier. Drops down a bunt and no play for Abby Orrick. Well, when given the opportunity, she has really given Big 12 pitching a tough time. Now her 12th hit in her 25th at bat, hitting nearly 500 against Big 12 competition. And after five, making a costly Whitaker. error in the last of the fifth, she starts the top of the sixth with a bunt base hit. Yeah, Chris, you took the words right out of my mouth. Your math a little quicker than mine was, but you know that Papelka wants to make an impact and right away her legs put her in scoring position. Yeah, stolen base. Texas, they've only been caught eight times stealing bases this season and now they're 75th steal as a team. Well, that final caught stealing, Chris, certainly a costly one in the fifth inning to end that rally. The cautiousness to not move up the extra 60 feet on the throw to center by Kreitz. Here with no outs, I think it's the right call. Quickly nothing and two on Jordan Whitaker, who's gone one for two. She singled her last time in the fourth. Sophomore out of Jacksonville, Texas. Bounces one to short, they will go to third, and out! Another mistake made by Papelka. Always Ooh. taught not to run on that ground ball in front of you. You like the aggressiveness with her speed, but Riley Love flips it on over to Abby Oric, and they cut her down for a big first out in the top of the sixth. Yeah, you know, you mentioned you, you like to see aggressiveness, but uh, you're already in scoring position. You're taught you never want to make the first or third out at third. And, you know, we're just talking about the cautiousness to not go to third on the throw into center that so many stolen base savvy ball, players will Gilbert. look for. Now with Gilbert going to run for the D8 DP in Whitaker. Man, UT's going to have to start from scratch again to build up this inning. What a play by Love, though. I mean, you know you can reprimand the base running, but it needs to be perfect. And if you don't get that flip to third, runners on the corners with no outs, and there's a lot of damage that can follow. Well, how about the role Riley Love has played? A walk and a two-run home run, and now a, a great defensive Spence decision to cut Dayton. down the speedster Papelka. Lou Gilbert, the Baylor transfer now at first. There's Bella Dayton. Hitless and two at-bats. And a one ball, one strike count as she works against Olivia Reigns. Dayton, the redshirt sophomore, her first season at Texas. A transfer from Arizona where she spent the last couple years. I love that call right there, Chris. What Texas did was the old fake bunt steal option it felt like from Gilbert because you can go as far as you want off the first base bag with the crashing Bailey from first you know that V is not going to come over and cover first base on that and then you can decide about 30 percent of the way down the line whether you want to take second or not Reigns has fallen behind on Dayton Three and one, and the last thing she wants to do is put a couple on for Janae Jefferson, who's got a pair of extra base hits in the on-deck circle. Three one is hit in the air, shallow left, love out, and the shortstop makes the catch. See the wind really bringing that ball further and further out for love. Maybe two or three more feet, and Jackson might have called it off. But right now, it is Love's Wait, World. Number two, we are all Jefferson. just visitors. As We're Janae loving Jefferson. It. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> you know what? You know, with all the NIL deals, wouldn't be surprised if her future has some golden arches on it. 
<laughs> but there, there's, uh, there's Love's gas stations here in Lubbock and throughout Texas as well. Oh, I'm a Florida boy, Chris. I know Love's. Nothing and one on Jefferson. Now she skies it to left field. Peyton Jackson under it. She's got it. A shutdown oh, half inning no turned in by no Olivia Reigns. And the Red Raiders will send up the big bats when we return. Our Miho Bailey and Ellen coming up. A 4-4 tie from Lubbock. Bailey Dulcini returns for a sixth inning of work in West Texas. Longhorns and Red Raiders tied at four. Demi Elder will bat. Not Carson Armijo, who had struck out twice in two at-bats. And here's a chance, Daniel, for Elder, the freshman out of League City, to be the table setter for the middle of the order. Certainly, I really like this decision by Coach Ward as Elder will live to see another pitch. But with our Miho, maybe bottom seven, you would want her to swing. You know, you never know. One swing could always end the game. But she has seen, I think, seven pitches and has struck out twice. So a chance for Elder. Elder has not picked up a hit in two Big 12 at-bats this season. Battled a little bit of an injury earlier in conference play. She always legs something out. And there's a base hit the other way. Demi Elder getting a chance, and she comes through with the leadoff single to start the Red Raiders sixth. Well, we talked about Kennedy Kreitz's 180 here at the end of the season. How about a one for 20 year for Elder into her biggest at-bat of her college career? And hold on, does Elder think she's coming out I'd be surprised if they wind up oh they're gonna oh they're gonna call the the old slapping call Chris that her foot was out of the batter's box so it's called a strike wow that's a tough tough break and not something you often see called so instead of a leadoff single now a one-two count and Elder takes outside that's a that's a big swing for Texas Tech yeah, you see it called a ton in the postseason. They, they really like to, you know, lock down on the slap hitters. That is brutal for Elder to swing your momentum and have to lock back in against Dulcini. Well, she'll get the base hit anyway. <laughs> what do they say, Chris, on the hard court ball, don't lie? So 
Elder shrugging her shoulders. And are they going to call it again? Oh, Coach Ward looks like he is furious, so it seems wow. like they will. And that would be the third strike, I do believe. Yeah. Yep. She's going back to the dugout. Now Sammy Ward. Ooh. Chat with Bubba Ewald. That's tough to just have that called twice, but Bubba Ewald, he was looking for it. Perhaps Texas had pointed it out. Yeah, what's, what's, Chris, I hate to interrupt, but what's, what's tough before this at bat is you see how depleted the white chalk is, and I think that's what Coach Randy Ward was kind of saying. The elder twice thought she had an opposite field hit. Dead sheets the first out. There's Ellie Bailey who struck out twice. A little bit of clerical work too if you're keeping score. Gilbert takes over out and right. She had pinch run for Jordan Whitaker, which will push Simmons over to the DP spot. So more speed in the outfield behind Dulcini. Strikes out for a third time. She's had trouble picking it up against Dolcini. And that's the second out. Talk about an entire momentum shift. That right there could certainly alter for the Red Raiders, number three, Texas' Riley season. Elwood. Because as we mentioned in the top, they are 16th in the RPI, 17th in the rankings. They can score in the top of the seventh. Avoiding what would be a big upset loss here against the Red Raiders could keep them in that regional host conversation. Two out, space is empty. Riley Ellen takes inside. Two balls, no strikes. Ellen just a couple weeks removed from a series at Iowa State that landed her Big 12 Player of the Week honors. Had five hits, five RBIs in that series. Tech took two of three. And she sends a fly ball to left field. Dayton near the foul line makes the catch. And an inning that could have started much differently. Instead, a one, two, three frame for Haley Dolcini. We will head to the seventh in a four, four no tie run, no hit, no from Lubbock. off the top of the seventh for the Longhorns, number 10, Mia Scott. Well, some big bats coming up for Texas, tied at four, top of the seventh, Mia Scott, Mackenzie Parker, Mary Ayacopo. will face off against Olivia Reigns, as cool as they come in the circle, the sophomore out of Pryor, Oklahoma, the ex-Sooner, pitching against Texas, trying to keep this game tied and give the Red Raiders a chance to walk it off in the home half. Couple hits in this game for Scott. A double in the third, a single her last time in the fifth. We're getting into that final at-bat territory. Something that, Chris, both of these teams have had experience on both sides, but more often, fortunately, on the negative side is Texas 
beaten in the final at bat against Oklahoma State last weekend. And Texas Tech has had tough times in tight games this year with a couple one run losses over the past two weeks. Lead off base hit for Scott, who's got three hits in this game. And that's a great start to the top of the seventh for Texas. How impressive has she been? Not Olivia Reigns, although she has been phenomenal, but first time really looking at the freshman and Mia Scott in person here this weekend, Chris, and she has lived up to the billing. The freshman who has had huge at-bats this year and in a spot where box score-wise, it's just another base hit. We saw Demi Elder come up just as clutch but get wiped away via the two violations. Now the meat of the Texas lineup, and all they gotta do is try to scrape across one. We saw Scott run earlier, there she goes, and it's into right center field. Scott stumbles, the throw from Blythe, and safe. Oh, she just beat it. She stumbled as she got up from her slide at second, and it gave Peyton Blythe a chance, but Scott gets in there safely. And now Texas has the go-ahead run at third base with nobody out. Whew, you talk about a freshman risk there, not sliding into third. Too many mistakes today by Texas, but just a fly ball or a base hit away from making them all wipe away. Well, Mackenzie Parker struck out her last time against Olivia Reigns, and... Well, Reigns would either like a strikeout or a ball that doesn't leave the infield here. Here's a 2-0. It's swing and a miss. Parker has struck out twice in her three at-bats. She is 0 for 3. And that last at-bat, Chris, she struck out with runners in scoring position and no outs. Looking for a little redemption here at the plate. Three hits and a homer against Oklahoma State last weekend. Bounce to short. Scott stays put. Now here she comes, and she slides under the tag. Mia Scott doing it all for Texas in the seventh, and the Longhorns retake the lead. Well, you thought maybe it would be Papelka doing this last inning, but she ran herself out of the, the inning, and Scott Mary nearly Iacopo. did so there. But the slide beats a throw that was just not perfect. It was a decent throw by Bailey. It just had to be perfect. A tough luck earned run allowed there. Actually, potentially an unearned run with the error by Kreitz on the throw off the steal. And there's two quick outs. If you're Olivia Reigns, you've got to focus on getting out of this inning and giving your offense a chance to win with a bloop and a blast. Ork, Blythe, and Kreitz are the three scheduled when we reach the bottom half of this inning. Place for the Longhorns, number 44. Iacopo had driven in three runs and three at-bats before rolling out moments ago. Now two outs with the base is empty. And a first pitch strike from Olivia Reigns. <laughs> Off speed on the outside edge, 0-2. These teams will play a double header tomorrow. We'll get started with game one at noon central. Game two will be about half an hour after the conclusion of game one. Again, That'll be it for the Texas Tech regular season and home schedule. A bouncer to Oric. She snaps the throw in plenty of time. But Texas, Mia Scott, after a single to start the inning, her speed gives the Longhorns a one-run lead to the bottom of the seventh. Now 
Haley Dolcini's been touched up for a pair of two-run home runs in this game, but she's got a chance to finish what she started on the road in the series opener at Texas Tech. A 5-4 lead for the Longhorns, who scored the go-ahead run in the top of this seventh. And before Abby Oreck steps in, time is called. Well, you just can't help but think back to that Demi Elder at bat that started the sixth. Twice we thought she had a leadoff single, but twice apparently that front foot was out of the batter's box. And now Oreck pops up the first pitch. The wind pushes it back to Jefferson in fair territory. And a quick first out starts the home half of the seventh. And if there's ever going to be a loss that you can't be too frustrated about and this you know of course still two outs away for Texas Tech to come back but certainly a promising outing today for the Red Raiders who have lost 15 of the last 17 against the Longhorns swept last season in Austin yet today has felt like as even of a game as you know we've seen in a while between Texas Tech and a ranked foe we gotta go all the way back to that pre-conference win against Northwestern Nothing and one on Peyton Blythe. Now she takes strike two. Hard to fault Olivia Reigns, who gave up the go-ahead run in the top of this half inning. There was the throwing error from Kreitz that allowed Scott to advance to third base. And now Blythe goes down swinging, and the Red Raiders are down to their final out. Twelfth punch out, make it a baker's dozen now for Haley Dolcini. Kennedy Kreitz scheduled, remember she reached on an error last time, but Sammy Ward's gonna get some power off her bench. The ex all Big Ten first teamer at Indiana, Maddie Westmoreland. She's got the power to tie it up with one swing. And Sammy Ward summons her with the Red Raiders down to their final out. And fitting for the Red Raiders, number it's like we mentioned Maddie last inning, you know, if it was the seventh, maybe you have our Miho hit. Hoping Westmoreland can run into one. In fact, Chris, I believe that Westmoreland had a pretty solid game against Texas last year in that third place game. She hit cleanup, walked and scored a run, including a big run in that fifth inning. Stretched the lead from 2-1 to 5-1. A pair of doubles and a homer this season. She takes strike two from Dulcini, who hasn't wasted any time with the Texas Tech pinch hitter. Westmoreland, the fifth year player. Two terrific seasons at Indiana. And she fouls it back. Tough to come off the bench and face someone as talented as Haley Dolcini. Yeah, she's going for complete game number 10. And as we mentioned, this is her best conference strikeout total. Blows it in on what would be 14 if she gets Westmoreland swinging. One ball, two strikes. Texas five runs on 11 hits, one error. Texas Tech four runs on three hits. 
and only one since the first inning. But right there against Texas. The one-two pitch. Swing and a drive foul. And now Westmoreland will try and straighten out that swing as Riley Love did back in the fifth. Another two-strike pitch, and it's strike three swinging. Haley Dolcini strikes out 14, and Texas holds on to take the series opener at Texas Tech, a final of 5-4. Yeah, what we saw there, Chris, was a resilient performance by Dolcini, her first outing against this Tech team, and got to give a lot of credit to Texas Tech. They had a 2-0 lead, they saw it evaporate, came back, and then just kind of got deflated by that violation in the bottom of the sixth. You tip your cap to the aggressive base running of Mia Scott. She potentially ran herself into two outs and got out of it, scored the go-ahead run. So Texas back in the win column, their 33rd of the year, eighth against the Big 12. And tomorrow these teams will play a double header on what will be senior day for Texas Tech. Great effort from the Red Raiders, but Texas edges Texas Tech in Lubbock tonight by a final of five to four. So for Daniel Gilman and the rest of our Big 12 now on ESPN Plus crew, my name's Chris Sylvester saying so long from West Texas where the Longhorns hold on five to four.